The Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning, it matches Genesis, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who was with God, and now who is with God, at the writing of the Gospel of John? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus left his habitation, came on this miserable, rotten planet with a bunch of miserable, rotten sinners. And in Acts 1, at the end of this gospel, he'll be ascended to father, the Father in heaven. In the beginning. Well, let's go look at the beginning. Look at Genesis 1. And I'll show you the Trinity. Within what? Nine verses. Three verses. Excuse me. In the beginning, God, there's God the Father, <coughs> created the heaven and earth. We're going to read about that in John 1. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, there's the Holy Spirit, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, there's Jesus Christ. Three verses, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son. And when you read through Genesis 1, you'll say, and God said, and God said, and God said. Where is Jesus Christ in the creation? I think Ephesians said he was in the beginning. That's Jesus Christ. He's the word. Now, I know as for me and my wife, in some ways, we mark the word of God. Jeremiah said, who has marked the word of God? I know you cannot mark Jesus Christ. You're not going to take a marker and mark Jesus. But let me ask you something. Is Jesus marked because of us? In his hands, in his feet, in his side. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Jesus Christ, you're never going to get rid of him. He's eternal from before, living, and off into eternity. The word is Jesus Christ. God has placed a name above all names. God has placed, we're going to see in John much later on, that the word, the witness of the word, the testimony of the word, is even above God. The same was in the beginning with God. What? The word. Where do we see that? Genesis 1-3. When God the Father spoke, Jesus made it. Let there be light. And Jesus responded. There it is. And I like that, son. Let there be all kinds of animals. Ooh, I like that, son. Well done. All things were made by him. Who's the him? Who? God and the Word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Revelation 3.14 So to say already that God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God... You've already threw the, the gospel of John out the window. You can't go no further. And that's anybody who says it. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. And look at the word. How close is the relationship to God in his word? It's his son. So what do you do when you go and add and subtract and footnote the word? You add and subtract and footnote Jesus Christ, the Word of God. I don't think God would be too happy with that. Especially in the Word, He tells you not to do that. You're taking the deity of Jesus Christ out. You're taking the blood out. In Him was life. In who? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. That's got to be Jesus Christ. Because that's the gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is Jesus Christ for life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The Bible speaks about Satan being darkness. He puts blindness in men, not light. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. 
And I'm going to use throughout John, I'm going to use the ministry that we have as a family, and you can use it. When we preach to people in Daytona Beach about the gospel, they're in darkness if they're not saved. And we send out the light of Jesus Christ, and they, that light goes by them, and it hurts them. I've got a great note. I got a great message out of John chapter three about being a cockroach. Well, what happens to cockroaches when you turn the light on in the kitchen when you wake up in the middle of the night? They flatter, scatter. scatter. What do you do when you get the light of the gospel out to those people? Man, they want to run. They or they want to get rid of you. Why? Because we're preaching rock music? Because we're selling hot dogs? Because we got beer? Right? No. Because we got the word of God. They don't like that light. So he's the word. He's life. He's light. Now you see when you take the deity of Jesus Christ out from John, the gospel of John chapter 1, 5 verses. You see what you've taken out from Jesus? The light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Without Jesus being God, I would be still in darkness today. Check 2 Corinthians 4 4. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay, now we're going to take a little, little avenue here. We're going to talk about John the Baptist. But we're going to bring John the Baptist up for what reason? To glorify Jesus Christ. Watch how it's done. The same came for a witness. Now I've got so many notes here, that, so if I take off, i got to color code my notes here and find out where and they are. And to bear witness of the light. Why did John come? Because the light is coming. He is said to prepare Israel for the Messiah. The sole reason John showed up was he became a high a sign on the highway. This exit, the Messiah. Don't go the broad way. Get off this highway and I'll show you the way to the Messiah. <clears throat> Jews require a sign, right? So there's a sign. Get off this exit. He's the Messiah. Too, too bad many people just kept on going down the highway. Psst, he's lying. <clears throat> The same came for a witness to bear witness of the, notice the capital L, light. That all men through him might be, might believe. There are seven lights. He was not that light, capital L. So, it wasn't John the man that was to be believed in. It's the man that John the Baptist would, would proclaim before Israel. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That's the light, people. After Israel had one whole night of pure darkness and the land had light, it, the world didn't have light. There's the light. There's your Lamb. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So John the Baptist was not a Messiah. He's only the messenger of Isaiah 39. We'll see that in a minute. That was the true light, capital L, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now look at that. What about the heathen that never knew? God told you in the Gospel of John, written about 85 to 90 AD, if not later, after the Pauline revelation, unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John has written to us the, the gospel that you hand to people who you think will get saved or have a knowledge of God and want more. John has told us that every person that is born, cometh into the world, that's birth, has some form of light of God as creator and a salvation of that God if you're in the middle of Africa somewhere and you look up that sky you don't say that happened by accident you have some kind of God Mugabaka Dukaboku whatever his name is but he is a supreme authority 
Only education of America ways would get you to say it came from nothing. That we come from apes. Romans chapter 1. Every man is born in his heart to look up at that sky and say, God. Now you may not call him God. How you reverence God, God will shed more light. He was in the world. Who was in the world? All right, let, 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 let's go back to verse 1. Let's say it was God. All right, let's say the word was God. Let's take it. This whole verse is not talking about Jesus Christ. It's talking about God. Let's look at that for a minute, okay? He was in the world. Tell me when God was in the world. If it was not Jesus Christ. You see how you just blew that religion away? At no time was God in the world. The world is contrary to God. God is holy. Be holy. God, God told Moses, listen, you can't even look at my face and live. This has to be Jesus Christ because who was in the world? Jesus. And if God's in the world, it's Jesus Christ. And the world was made by him. One and two. Well, go back to Genesis 1. Minus the name of Jesus Christ, when you go run to Genesis 1, who made the heavens and the earth? God. Right? Again, when was God in the world? It has to be Jesus Christ. Even Muhammad was a prophet, not a God. Even Moroni was an angel, not a God. Even Mary was a human, made later to be a God. She wasn't a God when she lived on this planet. After she died, she became a God by the Roman Catholic Church. So that would disclassify Mary because when Mary was on this planet, she was just a human. And then Catholics make you saints and gods after you're dead. Well, she didn't come back, did she? So there's only one person on this entire planet at one point in history that ever can be on this planet and proclaim to be God, Jesus. And we've only done 10 verses of John. You know, 10 verses of, of Genesis 1 will wipe out science, will wipe out religion, because if you don't believe God in the beginning, you're stuck. If you don't believe Jesus Christ, the Word, in the beginning, you're stuck. And the world knew him not. Refusal. They don't trust him today as the Savior, as the Creator. Try to teach these 10 verses in a science room in your public school today. All right, now let's get another fact about Jesus. He came unto his own. Well, who did he come? Where was he born? What family was he born? Jewish. We got the genealogy in Matthew. We got the genealogy in Luke. Mother and adopted father. So his own would be Jewish. So why do they paint pictures and television movies of him being Japheth? When all re reality is he's Shem. Now let's get with that, because I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But let's get to the fact is, if he's a Shemite, and going by the characteristics of a Shemite, he's short, dark-skinned, with, with a kind of weird nose. Noses tell the difference between Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Now, would your average American Southern below the Bible belt be... <laughs> Rebel and carry a Would he love to have a brown Jesus? And yet you still. You got another side of the coin. You got a black Jesus. And you're wrong again. Because Jesus is brown. To the Jews. The most hated people in the world. And the most hated people in the world. Hate Jesus. How do you like that one? His own received him not. What did his own give him? A cross and nails. What did they give the disciples in the book of Acts? Stones, death. But, ready, here we go. 
Are you a born again Bible believing Christian? Did you know you're in John chapter 1 verse 12? After the Jews rejected Jesus Christ, what happened? But as many as received him, I received Jesus Christ. I received the word. I received the light. I received the one that created the world. I received the Jew. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, there is no name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Excuse me. I'm not poking religious. I'm pointing the fact out. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that through the gospel of John. The only name I could be saved by is not Jehovah, but Jesus. And because I had received Jesus, he has given me the power that I have been adopted to be the Son of God. I will be equal to the angels, only redeemed by the blood which no angel can be. So I am a little bit higher than the angels. Because no angel has ever been bought by the blood. No angel has, has ever received Christ as their Savior. Jesus died for no angels. And all I got to do is put my faith and trust in Him and I become a child of God. And according to Luke chapter 3, as equal to Adam, the one that sinned. But equal to the Son of God before he fell. By believing on his name. Where can you find that? You find that in Acts 8 and, and forward. That's me. To believe on his name which was born not of blood. Now Christ had blood. But this is not blue blood. This is not royalty blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. No one wanted the Messiah. No, You, you saw that. We, we studied three Gospels already. They did not want God's Messiah. Nor the will of man. Man makes religion. He doesn't make Jesus. Man cannot save. Why was Jesus born? But of God. Not of blood. Acts 20, 28 says that blood was God's blood. There was no human blood in Jesus. It was sinless blood. Could it be human blood? Then else he couldn't pay for my sins. And the word was made flesh. When did that happen? Luke 1. When the Holy Spirit overpowered Mary's womb and made Jesus fertile. And dwelt among us. Who? John. James, Peter, Andrew, Judas. This word, capital W, goes back to verse 1, and all we've been talking about has to be Jesus. Now, let's go over. This is really one. This is, we must go. John 1, 1 John 1. Look at 1 John 1, 1. This one, we have to go to Scripture. We can't leave this off. If, all right, let's go through the chapter. This is very important. First John 1 John 1.1, the same writer. That which from the beginning, look at that, which we had heard. So this beginning will be not the creation. This creation would be the day that Jesus walked up to James and John and said, Come, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Remember that moment? We have seen with our eyes. Oh, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life first john who did john touch who did john listen to who did john see matter of fact who did john put his ear up to the heart of jesus scripture with scripture this is most important you got to get this will get you out of your coat chapter one verses one is about Jesus. And this is the beloved disciple. <clears throat> the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. John was up on the mount when he transfigured before them with Moses and Elijah. And Peter's going to speak about that moment. The glory of the only begotten the father. 
full of grace and truth. That's no other than Jesus Christ. John bear witness of him. Now we're going back to John the Baptist. This is not John the writer. The Gospel of John is not John the Baptist. This is John of Zebedee. John bear witness of him. Isaiah 39. Saying, This was he of whom I spake. What we're going to read now is a testimony written out by John the Baptist. He's going to sign this testimony. John is going to proclaim, this is what John the Baptist has proclaimed that you could bring into a courtroom. Here's some paper, John. Write down your testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay. This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. <clears throat> it's kind of hard because John was six months younger. I mean, John was six months older than Jesus. According to birth. Elizabeth gave birth before Mary gave birth. And of his fullness have all received and grace for grace. <clears throat> for the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Okay, now we know what we're talking about. We're not talking about the law. We're not talking about Moses. We're talking about Jesus. Jesus is above the law. No man have seen God at any time. Well, that just backs up what John just wrote. No man has ever seen God, but how can you see God in the flesh? Jesus. This testimony of John had to have been written before John wrote the gospel. In order for John to put John the Baptist's testimony in here, and what John the Baptist backs up what John said, and John backs up what John said. Getting kind of confusing. It's John. But the main conclusion is you can't see God, but you can see God through Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Now see, you'll take that and say, well, see, there is a difference between the two. Not so. Even a father and his son, there is the same. It's the same blood. Same name. This is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? John's out in the Jordan. Remember, he's out there baptizing. The priests in Jerusalem were like, Go check this out. They did not get our doctrinal diploma status of permission to do what they're doing. You can't go out in the ministry without our approval, John. Go check him out. Make sure he's got the credentials. Make sure he went to Jerusalem U. You know? And John the Baptist and Jesus never went to any schools. Even John, James, and Peter, and I forget, yeah, Peter and John, the Pharisees speak in the book of Acts. You learned no, no, Jesus, they said, you learned no letters. We'll get to that later. So, Who art thou? We want to know what's his initials after your name? DD? Are you a doctor? Are you a minister? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Ooh. So John is not one that came in Jesus' name. He said, I am not him. Oh, hold on. You guys coming for the Messiah, wrong person. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? He said, I am not. But, John, but Jesus said, If they received him, he would have been. But they didn't, so he's not. Art thou that prophet? Now, that prophet is the prophet spoken about. I'm just going to give you the Deuteronomy 18.15. God speaks to Moses and said, I will send a prophet 
That's the Messiah. He's going to be likened to Moses. He's going to be the Messiah. So guess what? Art thou that prophet? They are looking for the Messiah. When he comes, they rejected him. Moses and Elijah. And he answered, no. Moses and Elijah shows up and only two, three men see him. Outside of Jesus Christ. They probably just did not want the truth. And when I remember at his trial, art thou the one? You say I am. I am the Son of God. What more truth could you get? And they rejected him and gave him nails. They said unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? See, he's not approved of them. He's not a oh amen. He is a Levite. His father is a priest. He does not approved by the priest society. The, the, the Jerusalem priest society. He's not approved of them. He's supposed to be in a temple. But remember what Jesus said about that temple? You made it then the thieves. He said, I am ooh, John. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's uh, Isaiah 39. Well, I, I, that's true too, but Isaiah 39 is where it matches Matthew. You lay the books out in number and order, and it comes out and says, I am one in the wilderness, and it preaches John. About John. So what, you, what you're doing is you, you're running to Isaiah 39, to a new chapter in the Jewish life. For the Jews, life begins in Isaiah 39. They just don't want that life. Make straight the way the Lord, capital L. As said the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verse 3. You better be humble. Because here he comes, and I'm not him. And if you're giving me a hard time, and I'm spoken about in the scriptures, brother, what are you going to do? I can say that brother, because he's talking to his own kin family. What are you going to do when he really comes? I'm just a voice. You know what was missing with John the Baptist's ministry when Jesus came? Israel. John said, I'm preparing the way. Here he comes. You would figure the entire nation would have been right there at the Jordan River. Okay, we're going to wait, wait for him. Now let me ask you a question here. How many churches out there actually pre preaches that Jesus is coming for the church? And how many Christians are actually really waiting and living as he's coming? So see, the church is in the same state Israel. Yeah, he's coming. Just not now. Don't bother me. Right? You're, you're, you're ruining the revenue of, of, the, of the temple. You're ruining the revenue of the church. I mean, we got a rock band coming in next week, and we've already prepared the tickets and bought the booze and got the balloons and everything. Don't come on, don't bring that Jesus is coming, because he may come before our rock party for Jesus. So. And the Pharisees are like, hey, listen, we brought all these animals in. We got to sell them. You know? That's what Jesus said. You made a thievery. I don't know if that's a word. Make straight away as, the, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, said unto him, Why baptize thou if thou be not that Christ? That. What, what, why not the Christ? Is that a funny word? That. That and duh. Nor Elias, neither that prophet. So they're looking for the Messiah. They're looking for Isaiah, spoken about Malachi. 
They're looking for that prophet. It's supposed to be like Moses, Malachi. Jesus is nothing like Moses. Moses was a sinner. Was he not? Didn't he kill somebody? Didn't he argue with God? Peter and Moses would have had a great time together. I want you to go speak to, oh, not so, Lord. I can't speak. I'm not out here speaking. Peter would have been, yeah, he can't speak that well. Neither can I, Lord, you know. You know, they didn't want God. They wanted two men that show up so they could overpower them and rule them. Tribulation period. They're waiting for Moses and Elias to come. And notice the word that, not the. John answered him saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you, uh-oh, whom ye know not. Isn't that a great message? There's one somebody here right now, you don't even know who he is. And he has the power. So, with that verse right there, Jesus did not have a glow or a halo when he lived, okay? I think he would have stood out in the crowd if he had a halo and glue. That rules out the Catholic Jesus. Because if he's there, they would have known who he was. He was not a 40 or 100 watt Jesus. Because John says he's there and you don't know who he is. And if he had a halo, he would have been known. So, if you read your Bible, and I'm trying not to not religion through this, through this gospel, but look what we're doing. The Bible sheds light on man's belief. You see why the Catholics don't want you to read the Bible. You would think, oh yeah, if I listen to Brother Avery, he said, yeah, if they... If Jesus had a halo, they would have known who he was. And, wow, that's interesting. He it is who cometh after me is preferred before me. He's born after me. I am six months older than he is. Then he came. But I am came as Isaiah spoke of. This one's coming as the entire Old Testament. Both Moses and the prophet in the Psalms. What we read in the last chapter last night speaks of. John cannot say he is found in Moses, he is found in the prophets, and he's found in Psalms. John can't say that. But boy, can Jesus. They say, if you don't find Jesus in every single chapter, you need to go back and read, read that chapter, because Jesus is there. And John's saying, that one you, that one you study in synagogue, that one you study at the temple, here he comes. Here he comes. Whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. He said, this is just, John has no pride at all. I ought to bow down before him because he's God, not just because I'm going to take off his shoe. I ought not to have a reason to bow down before Jesus. Except for the fact that it's just the word. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to bow down and take off your shoe. No, Jesus, I should bow down because you're God. How's that? That would get him in trouble with the Pharisees because that would that would knock out the first and second commandment. Thou shalt not bow down before any God. Well, here's a man standing here. He would be receiving honor, which he received through his whole time. And if Jesus wasn't God, boy, he broke the first three right off the bat. So he had to be God if he fulfilled the law, allowing people to worship him. These things were done in Beth Arbor, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Okay, the second day of the writing. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Now, how did John know that this was Jesus coming? Have you ever been somewhere and someone just looked at you as a Christian and they didn't know who you were? And just, you know, there's something different about you. I know what it is, but I don't want to be around you.
John's going to get a revelation when, when Jesus is in the water. Again, it can't be the halo theory because no one else saw it. So God had to speak to John and had to sign, show him this sign while he's baptizing because maybe John didn't believe that this is the one. Watch. The next day John sees Jesus coming and said, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin, singular, of the world. So when Jesus dies on that cross, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? That cup in the garden was every entire sin ever to be sin in one cup. He didn't die for the sins of the world. He died for the sin. One cup. One payment. Don't come back weekly. I'm too wicked. Nope. He died for the sin. Look at her sin. No, we're all sin. There is no degree of sin. Sin is sin. The wages of sin is death. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. <clears throat> so here it is. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Shut up, John. You're too loud. This is the one I've spoken of is preferred before me. What John did. John tells the people of Israel, there, there he is. And now we're not even going to get that at the rapture. We're going to get called up the dead and alive together in the clouds, then we're going to go up and there's Jesus. <clears throat> the nation of Israel, by Isaiah, by John the Baptist, there he is. Get out of the way. That one. You move over. That one. There was no way that the people of Israel did not know because John said, there he is. See him? See him right there? There he is. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There he is. The nation of Israel had him pointed out by John. Does a man really change that much in three and a half years? There he is. Weren't the Pharisees were there? Probably sticked around. It says in the next day. You think they really went back to Jerusalem that there he is. Who art thou? Remember who John pointed to? And then when Jesus did make it back to Jerusalem, he said, There he is. That's the one that John said was, There he is. Don't you think that was a talk? John pointed him out. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. He was before me. And I knew him not. So they, as cousins, they did not grow up together and play together. John the Baptist would probably spend his time with his father at the temple while Jesus spent his time making uh, carpentry stuff. Okay? Two different lives. Let's get the fact here. Only one time, really. Right, well, uh, would they probably come across again? I don't know. It's when the parents of Jesus came as a family the three times a year. We know they did that. 13 years old, they left Jesus behind. But John says, I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. Wherefore am I come to baptize with water? The main purpose I am here right now is to proclaim Jesus the Messiah. This is why I'm here. And John bear record. Alright. This is written down. Saying I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. And abode upon him. Not in but on bond. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remain remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. John had a, had a word from God. When you see the Spirit come down, and who that Spirit lights upon, that's the one you're proclaiming. 
That's how you're going to know who he is. This is official record. And I saw and bear record written down that this is the Son of God. The court documentation and the nation rejected. John put it down in writing that this is Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, the chosen one of God, whom God said there will be a sign to me about him, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Again, the next day, this is the third day. Three days in a row, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples. John had disciples. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Genesis 22. God will provide himself, Isaac. Scripture is being performed like crazy as soon as Jesus shows up on the scene. Isaiah 39, boom, there it is. <laughs> Genesis 22, there it is. Looking upon Jesus, he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they follow Jesus. Two disciples leave John for Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them follow and said unto them, What seek ye? They say unto him, Rabboni, which means master. From the beginning they're starting to call him master, but right now we really don't know, not sure, but you're a rabbi. You're a rabbi. They will soon call him master out, outright. Right now they're not sure. He hasn't done anything yet. Where dwellest thou? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour, would be 4 p.m. One of the two which heard John speak, followed him, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. One of the two which John spake, followed him, was Andrew Simon? Looks like Andrew may have been a, a follower of John the Baptist. Two people, two disciples of John the Baptist, pick up and go, and now we're speaking about Andrew. Now, what does Andrew do? He does what every Christian should do. He first finds his own brother Simon and said to him, "We have found the Messiah. Where is he? Which is being interpreted to Christ?" You know what the sure sign of salvation is? Hey, I found the Messiah. I found Jesus. I found the Savior. Come to church. Come. I don't know how to explain, but come. And he brought him to Jesus. He brings Peter to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas which is interpreted a stone. Now, there's another problem here that people have. Oh, well, he, he goes out by the, by the seaside and he calls Peter and Andrew and he calls James and John. Didn't they know? Yeah, they knew who they were. But John's not going to tell you about something that happened after the, after the baptism of Jesus. He was called off to the wilderness to battle Satan. Later on, he's going to come back to Peter, Andrew, James, and John. All right, let's go. Let's go. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon. That's Peter. That's the old man. The son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, the new name, which is interpreted as stone. That's where, that's where the popes get their name changed. So see, Simon was Simon. Now he's Cephas, Pope Cephas. If you didn't think they had doctrinal statement to change their name. There it is. The day following, the fourth day, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and says unto him, Follow me. <clears throat> now Philip hasn't been mentioned all through the Gospels. Here he is. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So what's Philip do? Philip finds Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. 
Uh, see, they haven't got it yet. Yes, he's the son of Joseph on paper. The adopted. So, see, they haven't got it yet. They don't know. They're just starting off. But the first thing to get is they believe who Jesus is and they're going out telling people already. They will be corrected on the son of Joseph. Thing. And Nathan said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Nazareth must have a reputation. Remember the argument they gave they gave Peter, he was warming himself here of the Galilean. Ooh. That must have stung. You sound like a Galilean. Ooh, ouch. It had to be something about that area, you know. You just there's certain places in America. Oh, you're from there. Oh, uh, anything good come out after Philip said to them, "Come and see." Now this is the same Philip in the Book of Acts. He's going to have his daughters testify and prophesy. Jesus said, that "Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom." Is no guile. Ooh, he's upright character. Nathan said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? <laughs> when do you know me from? Jesus answered, said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Uh oh. Nathan answered and said unto him, Rabboni, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. And Jesus answered him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under a fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater thing. There's a sign to the Jews. What was the sign to nothing else? I saw you sitting under, the, under that fig tree when Philip came talking to you. At that moment, man, you got to be God. How on earth did you know that unless you're God? So what's the confession? The Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. I wish I had people like Nathaniel on preaching on the street. But signs are for Jews. They're not for Gentiles. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heavens open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So it looks like Nathaniel was one of the ones that followed, or maybe followed to a point. But you think just because I said I saw you under that fig tree, boy, well, you wait to see what's coming before the end. You're going to see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Who's that remind you of? That's Jacob in, in Bethel, where he sees the angels going up and down that ladder. So they're going to see signs of their father, Jacob. So Jesus is going to start playing out that they're going to be, this is something familiar, and this familiar is, this is the Old Testament. And it's already began with John the Baptist with an old man as his father, an old woman as his mother as, this happened somewhere. Yeah, Abraham and Isaac. Isaac's father and mother were beyond age, just like Elizabeth. Now, here's somebody who's seen what I'm doing. If Nathan, L, if Nathan, L, I can't have, have a problem with it. If Nathan L follows Jesus to the end, you know how many times he's going to be reminded of this instance when he perceives the thoughts of the Pharisee? Like, and he answered the Pharisees. The Pharisees didn't say nothing. Nathan L be standing back there. He did that to me and each and every time one of those instances happen that Jesus perceives their thoughts Nathan is gonna be hey that's what he did to me that's my testimony so we see John 1 Jesus is God He's going to a Jewish people. He's got Jewish signs because he's going to the Jews. And people are now beginning to follow him. And they still, some of them don't have no idea. But they will. And through the whole life of Jesus, we already know. They don't really get it. 